Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can add a geometric hierarchy track into an existing 3D camera track. So here we've got our existing track. You can see some trackers there. And of course, if we look at it in the quad view, you can see our camera moving along its path. And we've got you know, this whole bunch of trackers out in the 3D environment. And th this was done by the auto tracker with a little manual cleanup after that. So that's the starting point of this process. And now we're going to want to add a geometric hierarchy track into this. And we might want to do that for a couple different reasons. One is if there's a moving object in the scene and we want to use the geometric hierarchy tracker to track that. Might be that there's some object in the scene that has some motion to it that we want to track as well as a secondary tracking. There might also be a little residual drift in there somewhere that's due to lens distortion or rolling shutter or something that's going to be difficult to remove in a particular shot. We might just track that instead as a way to address it. Now in this example we're just going to track this pillar which of course isn't going much anywhere but uh, serves as a good test example. So we're going to start out making our box to match to it. And it turns out it, the main handles there are going to get to be in the way when we align at the bottom. And for that and another reason that you'll see in a bit, it's actually more convenient to have the pivot handles in the middle. So we're just going to move those first and then we're going to bring up our pinning tool and a key point here is that we don't want to calculate the field of view using the pinning tool now. We've already got a great field of view as a result of the camera solve. So we want to keep on using that. That field of view might even have a zoom in it that the solver has detected and computed which the pinning tool wouldn't be able to handle at all because it's just looking at an individual frame. So we keep that field of view as a constant existing value and we'll have it calculate the width and depth of the box. Let's also just go to unlit wireframes and I'm going to hold down control and start snapping this into place. We'll just zoom in a little bit. This is the right mouse to do that. So there we've got our initial pin for it. Now one thing that we're going to do here and this is the part where I said that it would be good to have the pivot up in the middle. Is we're going to go to the 3D panel here and the scale tool. And we're just going to increase the size of this thing a bit in the vertical direction. And that's so that it's sure to be looking at these end caps here. And to reduce the chance of getting thrown off by all the repeating texture of this brick here. So once we've done that, we're set to start with the actual geometric hierarchy tracking part. So I'm going to just go and shift click on our mesh. And now we've set up the basic object tracking node here, this object 01. It's going to hold all the animation. And the box that we were working on before is now a child of that node. So our next step is just to tell it that we want to have it be tracking along all six axes. And having done that, we can play through the shot. There's actually a little futziness to that, you see.
So let's just undo that. And we're going to go and turn on the careful mode there on the advanced tab. And now we'll run through that again. And we're also going to pay a little attention just when it gets to the end. We'll just click a few frames. Oh, a little jump or two. And now it starts to get off the edge. So if we go now to the hierarchy, to the quad view, and take a look at this, we'll see that our object is moving a whole lot along with the camera. And really, it's nowhere near where we expect it to be, which is back along these corners. So what's going on is that we didn't pay attention to the distance between the camera and the object. It just got created out here in a way that fit, but didn't really match up with the rest of the existing 3D environment with that's computed as a result of the 3D solve. So we need to adjust that. And, and the place to do that is actually quite a bit earlier before we go and set up the geometric hierarchy tracker. And we're going to do this again from the scaling tool. But this time we're going to use the uniform scaling spinner and we're going to hold down Alt, which is a little magic ingredient. And Alt says, well, okay, that you're scaling the overall scale of the mesh, but let's also move its position also. So if you look in the, you know, in the camera view, the perspective view at bottom right, you'll see that nothing's changing there but the object is moving further and further away until we get it to the spot where we want it, which is to line up more or less with those corners where the trackers are. And you know, I zoom in here, and now, now I can hold down not only Alt, but Control as well, and do a little more fine-tuned adjustment. So I put it now at the right distance to sit inside this 3D environment. And that's a key point to this and, and something that's true always when you're doing object tracking with camera tracking. You have to get the scale of both the camera scene and the object scene to match right. Otherwise you have that kind of mismatch where you have unexpected trajectories and you know mismatch in scale between the set and things moving in it is the basis between effects like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, movies like that. So you do have to pay a little attention to get the scale of the two things to be correct with respect to one another. So once you've done that, now we'll go over and we'll repeat setting up the geometric hierarchy tracking part of it and we'll run through the scaling again. And actually it winds up working out better because it's no longer doing this kinky thing of having the wrong path. You know, the tracking is really happening in the world space and before the world space just wasn't right. So now it comes out notably better. And I'm just going to stop it there. And when you're done with a geometric hierarchy tracker, it's always a good idea to lock it up, just as it is with a regular tracker, just so that you don't inadvertently mess it up and so you don't wind up spending additional CPU time retracking the same thing over and over again later on as you're working on something else. So now let's go back and look at our 3D view. There's our camera moving. 
there's our object sitting there. You can see it shifts around a little bit. Let's just zoom in. That's why I didn't want to go too far off the end because then it, it does go nuts once it, it's off the edge of the screen. But you can see in the region where it's on screen, it's just hopping around a little bit. And basically that's compensating for a little residual um, effects. This is the part where I said if there was a little lens distortion, rolling shutter or whatever, this kind of little motion would be compensating for it. And so you, you can actually have a better track with a, this little extra motion that's kind of you know not really there than you would if, if you had it so that it was really locked in place. And if this object was a moving object, say we were doing this for a car that's driving down this little alley there, then we would be doing this process on one frame in the motion and getting the car positioned right. And in that case, you'd want to have tracked some position in the scene that you can use as a reference to be able to do the scaling that I showed you with that uniform scale value here. You, know, you need to have some reference to let you put the car in the right place before you started doing the tracking. But once you have the car at the right distance from the camera on that one particular frame, then the tracking proceeds from there and you'll get the right you know, ensuing trajectory. So hopefully this gives you some more ideas about how you can combine the two of these kinds of tracking. Thanks a lot for watching.